Hey, Foot Clan, drafts are happening, the NFL's happening this year, and it's time to get into the Ultimate Draft Kit right now. Head over there, ultimatedraftkit.com, the number one draft tool for the upcoming fantasy draft season. Jason, you're very interested in that part of the year, that time of year. It is the best time of the year, and it is quickly approaching. And you'd like to be prepared. You'd like to be ready to go with the 100-plus uh, player profile videos. I'm sure that you you were even a part of some I, of those. I, was, I have <laughs> actually participated in each one, and they are awesome. Check it all out at ultimatedraftkit.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Back with you for Thursday, July 23rd. Andy, Mike, and Jason. Great show for you today. Back in the divisional breakdowns. Feeling pretty good. Oh, yeah. How you doing, Jay? Uh, I'm doing very well. Uh, happy hearts. Optimism for <laughs> the season. Uh, training camp right around the corner. You got more, more than one heart? Foot, happy hearts all oh, around. Oh, just all around. Me. Okay. Yes. He um, says we have heart happy hearts as well. That's He's, true. Like that's that's a that's a bold thing for you to proclaim, Jason. You don't know my heart. But I still speak for you, Mike. You're in a little <laughs> tiny corner on our video, and I'm in the studio. So your heart is <laughs> soups happy right now. <laughs> We're there's a lot of optimism happening right now with regards to the season and getting some of that normalcy that sports represents back into your life. Other leagues starting up, NFL is making some progress, and um, you know we want a, a a safe and enjoyable. It's not going to be normal. There's no way that it's going to be 100 percent normal, but that's okay. It's it now. It's I'm still going to be football. It might be, and I mean this genuinely. It might be better than normal. I'm not saying it's better to be, you know, with less fans, but I went back and watched the Super Bowl this last weekend. It was just on NFL Network, and I have never enjoyed watching <laughs> a football being thrown and caught and tackles <laughs> being made more in my life. I was like, what is this game? It's incredible. Does it seem much uh, further back than February? I mean, just like that was that was a game from the first Super Bowl ever played. <laughs> That's what I watched. That's it was much, awesome. That's how much time's taken place. I know it is weird. I've seen some highlight videos this week, and it's just like, I'm ready. I'm ready to enjoy that kind of communal viewing experience. You you never think people will get tired of watching Netflix shows, but there's nothing live anymore. And if you get the live sports out there, oh, and hard knocks, hard knocks yeah, that's is still happening oh my somehow. Goodness. This is amazing. And that's two camps, right, Mike? That's uh, yeah, well, yeah, it's, Rams and it's Chargers, both Los Angeles teams. That's exciting. That's exciting. So there is, there's a lot going on. I want to invite you, if you're a new listener, welcome in to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. We're happy you're with us, preparing for your upcoming drafts and a very fun season. I want to encourage you to click that subscribe button. You won't regret it. No, no. I mean, it's completely free, and it's just a click, and then well, you get all like the episodes. Unless you overclick and like injure your finger, that's true. There could be a small. I'm just just trying to th protect us from lawsuits, Jason. I, I don't think that happens to people. I really don't. <laughs> it was a first for everything. YouTube.com/slash The Fantasy Footballers. You can check us out on Spotify on audio and video. Ooh, on Spotify, which is exciting. The Fantasy Footballers, one of a f very select few shows on Spotify that now has the video version of the podcast available to you. So uh, that's pretty cool. And then I wanted to say congratulations to Andrew D, who was the winner of the Devontae Adams jersey. We just gave that away at footclangiveaway.com. Andrew D, congratulations. That's uh, in the mail. It's on the way. Big bounce back season expected for Devontae Adams this year. Oh, yes, He could course. very easily be the number one wide receiver in football, and we're going to talk about him today. Yeah. Yeah, divisional breakdown. So let's do some uh, buy sell first. 
Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. Well, I see what the judge is doing here with the buy-sell question, a little bit of fan service. His buy or sell is as follows. Kareem Hunt will have over 55 receptions this season. Are you buying or selling Kareem Hunt more than 55 receptions? I will throw this out there. Eight games in Cleveland last year, 44 targets, 37 receptions. And that would be a career high if he hit 55. Even his incredible rookie season, when he started all 16 games and had 1,327 rushing yards, he still only had 53 receptions. So I think you look at this number, and now you see he's not a workhorse back, and you're likely to sell. I am buying that he will have a career high in receptions personally. The news out of Cleveland of him possibly being the third wide receiver. Coaches have talked about this. He's been in all the receiver meetings. He will be used as a running back. He will be lined up in the slot. And while he won't be the workhorse back, that's obviously the first and second down work is Nick Chubbs. His role is going to be far more oh. in the receiving game. Sorry, I thought you were calling him Nick Chubbs. <laughs> I, I was not realize it was a, there was a, an apostrophe it was an, in there. A possessive. Yeah. Isn't you got you to you see my like, punctuation. Hey, it's Nick Chubbs. <laughs> Uh, this is a, despite the fact that Brooks was just pandering to the, the 55 lovers out there. How dare you? It, it's, it's the right line. I mean, his, his previous career high was 53 receptions in his rookie year, 37 in just eight games. Obviously that paces out above this number. I'm going to sell it. I think he's going to be close, but I think it'll be, you know, maybe 50, 51. I don't think he's going to get there. Ooh. Mike, what are you doing? Yeah, I have him down for 50 receptions. Uh, I, I get that you know, his his pace was absolutely insane, but this is a very new team. This is a rebuilt offensive line. It's a completely different offensive scheme. So it, I won't say it's impossible, but I'm not going to project 55 will happen. That surprised me. I thought you were going to be a big-time buy there. I actually no, – No, I love Kareem. I love grabbing him in drafts, but – He's just not. under the Austin Eckler model. I figured he would fall in line with the potential. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I have him pretty well above that. I've got him with 64 receptions this year, which seems, you know, obviously that's much. You higher love than him. Well, I, I do think, look, I mean, he was, with, you know, this is with the exception of Austin Hooper being added to the team. This was still OK. There's a new coaching, uh, you know, regime in place, but it was. Odell was there, Jarvis was there, Baker was the one throwing him the ball, Chubb was there, and he was on pace for 74 receptions. So, uh, you know, I think 64 is is a, a fair projection for 2020. Okay, yeah, no no Austin Hooper last year. Yeah, I said Odell that. Beckham, how many receptions Odell Beckham was hurt. So how many, how many receptions do you have Eckler down for, Jason? Oh, no. Oh, man. Oh, no. Let's By check the way, this out. Uh, Kareem Hunt, the running back 29 in best ball drafts right now. Uh, I think it's a fair price. And, it, you know, he's going to go as far as Baker goes. I mean, the, yes. the quarterback position is what matters here. Are, are they going to move the football or are they going to be off the field? I mean, I think they have an okay defense. You have a uh, well-placed question, <laughs> Mike. I have uh, mm -hmm. Austin Eckler down for 64 receptions. So oh, I have them on. both being used the same in the passing game. I, I think the passing volume in a Tyrod-led offense is going to be far less than the passing volume of a Baker-led offense. I think there's some thought that Cleveland's volume goes down, though, and then you mix Hooper in there. I think it's a good line. I think 55 is a good line. You've got them for 300 receptions. <laughs> so there you go. One buy, two sells. <laughs> All right, that, that was buy or sell from Pristine Auction, pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS. Get a $10 credit. Let's talk some news. News and notes from around the league. Look, it's not often I use my powers to make a promise on this show, to guarantee our listenership, our, our, the fantasy players out there, you know, good fortune. But I'm, I'm going to make the guarantee right now. I This is the year no catastrophic injuries in preseason games. 
Wow. I'm making oh, that that into a, actual games. Into yeah. games. I, I mean, Whoa. that's pretty bold. But I'm going to go out on a limb because no, not, there will be none. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the NFL and the NFLPA have agreed to zero preseason games. We were talking before the show, Jason. You know, a lot of the way fantasy owners, uh, commissioners, leagues navigate their draft schedule, like when they're going to actually, you know, get together, or maybe this year it's going to be a Zoom draft, but you navigate it almost by that benchmark of that third, fourth preseason week, mm -hmm. trying to avoid that. Uh, you know, you hear the stories of, you know, we've had a draft right in the middle of, I think it was preseason week three one time because it just lined up. That was the only time we could get together was right in the middle of the games and pl players are going to get hurt. Yeah, that's true. But players get hurt in camp. Players get hurt, um, you know, in, in practice. So that will still be happening uh, during the time. And because the, the schedule has been moved up, I would still recommend you push your draft as as late as possible, late August, early September, uh, kickoff of week one, I believe, is September 10th. Which could very well, I mean, it's probably going to be that date, but it could be pushed back too. Yeah, so assuming it's it's then, um, I would say right there, that August, September changeover, that's where you want to aim for your drafts. Uh, avoid the players that do get injured in, uh, in camp and practice and have your rosters ready to go. Yeah, dra draft timing is all about just trying to create the best uh, level playing field so people aren't, you know, you draft in week one, two or three, four players get injured, and it really disrupts. Yeah, it's just mm -hmm. it's not fair. It's not. It, it's really it's really sucky when it's like you you draft your team, and before anybody has played, your team is different now. I don't. I lost player X, Y, or Z, and nothing has been played yet. I didn't get anything out of them. There, uh, and maybe we should talk also about some of the things we've done in our league of record because this is happening every day. You know, we're having these discussions about how to adjust your league for COVID and the coronavirus and what's taking place in player safety. We talked about the IR spot and some of those updates on the last episode of the show. Today, we, we're in a keeper league. So we had a discussion on, you know, in our league today about what if, because you have to have the what if. I mean, what if, that's the, the banner of 2020 is it not it's 2020 yeah. colon what if because everything that seems to be able to happen has happened what if you don't have a complete season how do you look to the future for draft order and things like that and we made a decision to vote on kind of when we de would declare a winner you know if there were eight games in an nfl season this year we're willing to declare a winner and then use those standings in reverse for draft order next year. Right, and it's really unique for keeper leagues because yes. if you're in a redraft league, it's you know so it's, it's not going to make a big difference. And if you're in a dynasty league, you're you're it's much easier to deal with this. You you know you go by what the NFL is doing. But in a keeper league where you have draft pick trading, you know, and people are stacked in this year's draft and they're getting getting the early round picks, you do have to kind of have that threshold. Eight games is what we're going with. Um, but yeah, I, I, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's one of those things we'll help walk everyone through as we get closer to the season, some best practices for your leagues to set up and what we recommend. And, and we would also love to hear what you are doing in your leagues. Um, you know, sometimes we get feedback and we're like, that's a brilliant idea. And we can disseminate that information out to, uh, thousands of fantasy football fanatics. 59 players tested positive. According to the NFLPA, 95 total staff and players, 59 players, uh, known positives in their most recent round of testing. They're going to be testing daily for two weeks, and if the positive rate falls below 5%, it will drop to every other day. And uh, that number is good. That's well below 5%. 59 is, I believe, like 2.4% of what I... All right, around there, yeah. Somewhere around there. And that's a little bit lower than numbers that they had tested out a week ago. These are this is what the NFL is going to be looking at uh, as they adjust and and manage the player safety. Um, but we're on track. We're on track there every day. It seems like another uh, piece to the strange 2020 season puzzle comes together. Roster sizes are expected to be limited to 80 to begin training camp. Is there any other COVID related news? I don't think we have anything else there. No, not not COVID related news. Just of like, man, it's. Like you said, it's a rough year, and with no preseason for these like fringe guys, these Philip Lindsays, you know it. Yeah, it's it's really really unfortunate that this is what's happening.
Well, and I, you know, I thought you were going to bring up the fact that it's also potentially unfortunate just from player injury standpoint, you know, there is some sort of ramp up and physicality in the preseason games and, right. you know, a lot of uh, anecdotal evidence that the reduction in the, you know, in some of the amount of the physical practices has led to players dealing with, you know, we see the hamstring injuries. We see the kind of even not the catastrophics, but the, you know, pulled groin, you know, those kind of two, three week injuries happen uh, a lot of the times in camp preseason beginning part of the year, you know, we, it's football. So players are going to get hurt. And so hopefully it doesn't go up because of the lack of play time. One other bit of news, Sean McVay hinting at using a Ooh. four-man backfield. Basically, <laughs> McVay was just talking about... <laughs> oh, what what are you the, hyping? Is that the John Kelly train? <laughs> no, no, I'm saying, but this is this is just hype train stuff. Like For, this, what, is, what's, this is the opposite of a hype train. This is the, like, this is a sad train. This is a train <laughs> with no coal fine. in the engines. This is like... <laughs> I mean, I just wanted to highlight that we were talking about some coach speak that may or may not be true. Uh, Jason, I think that that you, like you were all in on Cam Akers and after the draft that that he got picked up by the the Rams, and I've slowly been warming to the idea, but now it's now I'm like going you know Paul Abdul style, two steps forward, two steps back, and like <laughs> I don't know what to make. Of the Rams running back attack, now you see what I did there. The, Finished off the Rams. Yeah, that was that was well done. Very professional. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I was a big fan of Cam Akers, uh, his college tape and the the landing spot, everything. The the more that you know, this off season, however, since then has gotten truncated. The more I buy into these kind of reports, I don't think it's going to be easy for a rookie to come in and just completely. Uh, you know, have the job from week one. And so if, if Daryl Henderson is involved, if Malcolm Brown is, you know, happens to be the more uh, valuable fantasy option for the first few weeks of the season, I won't be surprised. And he's completely undrafted, even in deep I, breaks. I, just to weigh in myself, this this is just McVay saying in a different way what we expected this backfield to be. None of us thought Cam Akers was starting day one getting the Todd Gurley role. No. So he cited the success of the 49ers backfield. There's still fantasy value in the 49ers backfield. And I believe Cam Akers is far and away the best talent on that, in that backfield. So it hasn't changed a lot from my perception. I think he earns that job. It's just, is it three weeks? It, it's yeah. the same question we have for Jonathan Taylor and Clyde Edwards-Alaire. And remember, uh, McVay was coaching teammates with uh, Shanahan back in Washington. So he's looking at his buddy's offense, getting to the Super Bowl. You know, if he's citing that, he obviously respects Shanahan uh, quite a lot as a coach. So just real quick to follow up on that, Cam Akers right now, best ball running back 26. Really? So going one spot behind Raheem Mostert, one in front of Mark Ingram. A few spots ahead of Kareem Hunt. A few spots ahead of Kareem Hunt. That's pretty high. That, that's, that's why pretty I thought high. that this news is important. Yeah, I've got him as my running back 30 right now, so that that would be higher than what I see, but his range of outcomes should he get the job is much higher than you Yeah, know. and I, you know, we we use the best ball ADP cuz those drafts are happening most frequently now. This is one of those areas where I'm not sure that I give it as much credence as to what will really happen. Cam Akers is a rookie. The payoff in a best ball league is if you if you get 7 8 weeks of him being the main guy, that's sure. worth that 26 running back spot for what the top end might be. It is interesting though. That's a pretty that's a pretty high spot. I'm curious where he'll actually end up. I think he's very talented, but uh, maybe that's how they manage some of the injury stuff in the NFL this year is more of the committee approach, yeah. which will just sure. mean you'll have to be more astute, Foot Clan. Yeah, certainly. All right, we want to thank Omaha Steaks. Always, always. For supporting the show. They're offering a, a steakhouse grilling package with an exclusive offer just for our listeners. If you listened to Jason the other day, you learned that he had three freezers so that he wouldn't be caught off guard by the amount of meat that he would purchase, gotta, show gotta up. stock that meat. How often do you buy bulk Omaha steaks and then just forget that you bought them so you buy them again and then you get double delivery? I have like never... When you, when you, Toilet paper, and you're like, do we oh, need yeah, toilet paper? Oh, yeah, I already paper? got that. I have and never Jason's once. Like, do we need steaks? <laughs> I have never once forgotten that I have them, but I have ordered them 
while already having some and be like, I could use more. That makes sense. And, and so we're talking the Omaha steaks, bacon wrap, flame and yon, the <clears throat> pork chops, the chicken, the kielbasa sausages, and more delivered to your door, including the smoky sweet bacon, fork tender flame and yon. Oh, much cheaper than going out to a restaurant. You get to enjoy a variety of delicious meat at your house. And this is. Yeah, you've taken to grilling like nobody I know, Jason. You have become what do you you call yourself a chef now? I, I don't know chef. if that is the the leap that you should be making, but I had a steak that you made and it was pretty darn good. You can visit omahasteaks.com, type footballers in the search bar to shop the summer grill packs today. Don't forget when you order the grand summer grill out package, you also get four jumbo franks and four Omaha Steaks burgers free. To complete your steakhouse experience, omahasteaks.com type footballers in the search bar. And Foot Clan, did you know that two out of three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35? So I'm talking to most of you. Look, the best way to prevent hair loss is to do something about it while you still have hair left. Now, thanks to Keeps, you can visit a doctor online and get the hair loss medication delivered right to your front door Keeps offers generic versions of the only two FDA-approved hair loss products out there. They deliver your medication every three months, so you can say goodbye to pharmacy lines and awkward doctor visits. Keeps treatments can take four to six months or more to see results, so it's important to act fast. The sooner you start using Keeps, the more hair you will save, or as we say, the more hair you will keep. Keeps. Keeps treatments start at just $10 a month. Plus, for a limited time, you can get your first month for free if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss. Go to keeps.com slash footballers to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's keeps, K-E-E-P-S dot com slash footballers. Let's get divisional. All right, we're in the NFC North on our divisional breakdown shows. Starting with the thirteen and three, fake Green Bay Packers. Thirteen and three. I was going to praise them before saying those things that you just said. What are you talking about? Uh, <laughs> I I heard somebody say the word fake. Oh, yeah, oh, oh, because the Green Bay Packers aren't as good a team as a thirteen and three record would say. Thirteen and three is tough to pull off. I, I'm just starting there. Sure. Um. Very fortunate in in those close games. They were nine and one in one score games. That is not in a vacuum. You do have Aaron Rodgers mm -hmm. as your quarterback, and I think that that is a differentiator when you have a, you know, one of the best quarterbacks in football leading your team in terms of one score games. But still, nine and one. That's tough to pull off. Yeah, when you have a good defense, which they did a lot this last year to improve their defense, I think it's a you know an above average defense for sure. And you have Aaron Rodgers, you can be a good team. Uh, but they were not a thirteen and three team as, as far as when you watch the games last year. We were always so surprised week in and week out that they walked away with another victory they shouldn't have. And again, you're right. You, when you have Aaron Rodgers, you know if this is an eight and eight team, you automatically say, well, they're nine and seven or ten and six because they've got a first ballot Hall of Fame quarterback. So that makes sense. Um, but the, all the breaks went their way. Nine and one in one score games, that's one of those metrics that when that happens, it will unravel the following year. But could that be good for the passing game, right? Because look, when you're 13 and three and everything's breaking your way, that's how you end up with Aaron Jones rushing for 100 touchdowns. Um, that's just not going to be able to happen if not all the breaks go their way. They'll, they'll have to throw the ball a little bit more. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to feel about the Packers because you've had this degradation of offensive passing output year over year. The decline of Aaron Rodgers as being that elite fantasy football quarterback, which then, of course, means he has to be in the discussion every year now is, you know, secret value Aaron Rodgers because any week he could throw five touchdowns. He did that a couple times last year, but reliability wasn't there. He's the quarterback 12 off the board right now. Ninth round pick things. We never thought we would say about him. They added Devin Funchess to the roster. They lost Jimmy Hooray. Graham. That <laughs> oh, seems like about a wash. That's better. It seems like a wash. I would rather two. have Funchess than Jimmy Graham. I, I, I wouldn't. 
No? No. No. I just I because would. of the I mean, the role that that tight end position plays on a down by down basis versus, you know, what is what is Devin Funches for this team? Devin Funches is a wide receiver tight end. F- four. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, but he's not I, lining up as a tight end. He's not you. He's not blocking. He's not doing. Yeah, same as Jimmy Graham. Yeah, maybe. So, maybe. <laughs> neither one of them is going to be blocking much. Um, but it does. You know, with Jimmy Graham out, uh, you obviously have some people are really enamored um, with Jay Sternberger and the ability to break out here. You've got vacated targets that Jimmy Graham left. Jay Sternberger was a very. I liked him as a college prospect. Uh, specifically with his receiving work, and I think he's a late round guy that you're probably not drafting, but you want to keep an eye yeah, on him. I was gonna say there's, I, I don't have any advice for Jane Sternberger because I think that there's, you know, you start one tight end. We have seen him have no success. We can like him as a prospect, but uh, <laughs> did you say did I call him Jane? That's what it I wanted. Like I heard did Jane I say Sternberger. Jace. Jace. Not okay. Jane. Just making make sure Jace is on the case. I feel like Jane is just one step away from Mary Steenburgen again. <laughs> and then we're. Uh, uh, that might have been what your brain did. There's just so many tight ends that you've seen some evidence of their success that you can take that very late round shot on. I can't imagine there being practical use in drafting Jace. Sure. And I, I agree. It's just a name that if if he has a good week one you should be aware of. Yes. Um, the other big names on this roster uh, are mostly easy to deal with, right? We're all, are we all three all in on Devontae <laughs> Adams? Because the way that I look at oh, it, he is yes. 100% <laughs> locked in as a superstar, should be drafted in the first round, f- phenomenal fantasy option going forward. Are there any disagreements here? Or can we just move not, on from? Not from me. Not not for me. No, I mean, in that, games played, he was a thirty percent target share anywhere. guy. Yeah, there, there's nobody on earth that is having a question with whether Devontae Adams is an elite fantasy co- or, uh, wide receiver. Right. So we don't need to talk about him. The big question is Aaron Jones. Yes, he was phenomenal last year. The running back two or three, depending on your scoring. He was a touchdown machine, super efficient. He, you know, was someone that was touted going into last year as if they would only give him the work, he'd be great. But now you have all the touchdown. The touchdowns are going to come down. Third in fantasy points per game, 14th in touches per game. So he did a little bit more with the opportunities given him than others were able to do. And over the course of his career, you have 55% of his (laughs) rushing touchdowns that have come from six or more yards away. So he's been one of those players... Uh, Saquon's one of them, Kenyon Drake, Raheem Mostert. Those are the only three players that have higher rates than Aaron Jones. He can score outside of those goal line opportunities where we've seen Aaron Rodgers be able to sneak the ball at times, where we've seen, you know, this is one of those things you bring up with whatever, Philip Lindsay, Devin Singletary, players that you're like, oh man, they need to break off a long run or they're not going to get the chance. Jones has done it consistently, but it's more volatile the way he delivered this third in fantasy points per game number. A, a little bit, yeah. He was he definitely was not consistent, but I will say, but he was weak uh, winning. He yeah, he was definitely weak winning. He has the home run ability, so he he can rip off a couple really long touchdowns. But his numbers inside of the five, as far as like attempts and success of of turning those into touchdowns, is is really not outlandish. So you know you have seventeen carries from the five are in. He has I mean, ten touchdowns in those carries, but. You know, guys like Zeke, 18 carries, 10 touchdowns. Uh, Christian McCaffrey, 20 carries, 9 touchdowns. So what could be fluky is that he actually had that many attempts inside the five compared to these other guys when you look at like just his overall volume and, and how much he's on the field. But his efficiency inside the five isn't this uh, just absolute outlier of a number. So I'm still in on Aaron Jones. I'm not really concerned about A.J. Dillon, and I'm definitely not concerned about Jamal Williams coming in when, when they get those opportunities. The The question for me would be uh, Aaron Rodgers. Like, does Aaron, does Aaron Rodgers, can he return to his touchdown form? Over the course of his career, he has a 6.0 career touchdown percentage, so every 6% of his attempts is a touchdown, which is very high. The last two years, though, 4.2, 4.6. They didn't really add weapons for him. I mean, besides Devin Funches, of course, but those numbers have been down for Aaron Rodgers, and you saw the rise for 
uh, for Aaron Jones in that area? Does that switch back at all? Where what is your it's, confidence level in the? Because to me, the touchdowns are going to happen. It's just where do they go? Yeah, I mean, I think it switches back a little bit because he he loves to go to Devonte Adams in the red zone, and he didn't have that opportunity at times last year. That's one focus. I mean, Aaron Rodgers, there's you know him, Patrick Mahomes probably the top two quarterbacks that you have complete trust in throwing around the goal line on a regular basis. Um, so yeah, I think that that it, I wouldn't be counting on a lot of goal line opportunities for Aaron Jones as being kind of the backbone of his season. And to speak to the consistency, five games with less than seven points last year, that was the most among top 24 running backs. Top 24. Yeah. Not like the, the most yeah. in the top five. This is like, if you're the running back, 24 you had fewer bust games than Aaron Jones and now, and they drafted yeah I was gonna a say AJ Dillon in the second round when you have 11 touchdowns inside the 10 which is what Aaron Jones had and then you bring in a big bodied you know goal line third and inches AJ Dillon which you drafted the second round I I mean we all know the touchdowns are coming down but the opportunity does scare me the consistency scares me if the defense was worse I would be more in on Aaron Jones, ironically, because he is the mold of Alvin Kamara. He and and I don't think that the Packers want to win games scoring, you know, and having the same offense that the Saints do. The, the 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 offense of the Saints is let's just go for fifty points a game. Um, and Lafleur has you know last year he wanted to slow things down. And, and let me and let me ask worked. Mike a question. Mike has him the highest of the three of us at RB six. He he said he, you're a believer in Aaron Jones. I think we all believe in Aaron Jones, the talent. It's more you know what are we going to expect from right. from Lafleur on a week to week basis? Sixteen touchdowns last year. Where do you have him touchdown wise? And I'll give you a second Oof. to find that. Where do you have him? For this upcoming year, because like you said, we all agree that it's coming down, but what does that actually equate to? Because last year it wasn't just, it was 16 on the ground and then it was another, right. what, three receiving touchdowns? Correct. Yeah. So, so that's I have, I, astronomical. I have him regressing. I have a, it down to 10 rushing touchdowns, uh, two through the air and a little bit more receiving work of, you know, I'm, I'm trying to account for those one score games kind of flip in the other direction so just give him a few more receptions and, and that turned into a, a very high ranking running back for me uh by the way i'm gonna throw this out there because the resident packer fan of our studio is most certainly al borland and uh he's nodding and i i just want to throw the stat out there since you became a producer on the show al aaron Rodgers is uh <clears throat> he's ranked 48th in completion percentage oh man i don't know are you on the mic today al <laughs> i am so uh, How do you feel is this a direct that? correlation? I mean, we do a lot of statistical analysis yeah. here. This seems pretty cut and dry. This is on you. It's on me. Okay. Well, so, don't worry. You've got a new quarterback in tow. Oh, no. And I'll bet you love him. <laughs> Boo. Boo. <laughs> All you. right. Thank you. I don't think that there are a lot of huge question marks on this roster outside of the ones we discussed. I think we can move forward. Um, well, do you, Jamal, do you, Jamal Williams it, will probably uh, still have a role in the offense to occasionally disrupt your Aaron Jones. Yeah, but Who's he the wide himself receiver is not two? draftable. Who's the wide receiver to? It's Funchess. It's, it's Lazard. It's Lazard. Okay. I mean, it's irrelevant. <laughs> it almost sounded like you were just, you were like, yeah, I agree now. No, no, I don't. I think, I think it is Funchess. I think Funchess will be better than Lazard, but my, my, my answer is truly, I think it's irrelevant. In the past, Aaron Rodgers, wide receiver two, has been a phenomenal value in fantasy. Even his wide receiver three Those days times, are gone. It's not that team anymore. It's not that coach. It's not that Aaron Rodgers. And so I'm, I'm avoiding Funchess or Lazard. I don't really care. 13 and three becomes what this year? 10. 10 wins? Yeah. I okay. think there'll be a 10 win team. Speaking of 10 win, uh, 10 win teams, the Minnesota Vikings mm. went 10 and 6 last year. That's who we're talking about now. They were sixth in the NFL in rushing yards per game, rushing touchdowns. It was the Dalvin Cook show. This is not the same Minnesota Vikings defense of years past. Um, and it won't be even more so in 2020. Uh, more of those mainstays are now gone. Mike Zimmer's getting an extension. Multi-year yep, extension. Like uh, 
Gary Kubiak is now the offensive coordinator, replacing Kevin Stefanski, who's now the head coach for Cleveland. Got a mind-blowing stat on Mike Zimmer that I'm going to throw out there with no fantasy relevance or purpose whatsoever. Well, that's, <laughs> it's to blow minds. Uh, this, this is just shocking. Since he's coming to Minnesota, the Vikings are 1-17-1 outdoors against the team with a winning record. Ooh. They're, they're like a right. year to year. They're a winning football team. Yeah, they win. That's a hot. The majority hot of their games that, that is, are at that's home. It's five percent of your games. That's crazy. That's just shocking. <laughs> but all right, let's talk about the fantasy uh, outlook for this for this roster heading into twenty twenty. Kirk Cousins being drafted as the twenty second quarterback off the board. I get it. the The kind of knee jerk reaction to Kirk Cousins is. Already kind of a melancholy feel about Kirk Cousins, low passing volume, and then you just lose to Fun Diggs. And that's just kind of the quick reaction, right? Is mm -hmm. you take somebody that you kind of didn't love fantasy wise and you take away their arguably best weapon, certainly best big play weapon. Stephon Diggs last year consistently, you know, those deep touchdowns. So where are we with Kirk Cousins? They add Justin Man. Jefferson, a first-round wide receiver, a player that we all really like, or at least I like. No, we, no, we all I, like him. I, we like the receiver. Yes, here's, yes. Here, here's the question is the offense last year, how much of that offense was actually Stefanski and how much of that offense is Mike Zimmer? Well, because that's, that is everything. But Jason, you're – Making a funny face. Yeah, I mean, Mike Zimmer's, go, you know, he's the head coach. He's going to dictate whether he wants to run more or pass more, but he's a defensive coach. The offense was completely, right. uh, you know, I, I think that it was Stefanski. However, Kubiak was there, and I think it was more Stefanski and Kubiak, and now it's Kubiak. Sure. What I mean by that is, like, you had uh, a couple years ago, that's when you had uh, DeFilippo Z was Zimmer the guy. Zimmer forced the issue at the back half and of that Zimmer, year said, screw this crap, we aren't throwing the ball this much. This isn't how I win a football game. So that's the big question to me is, what offense are we going to see? Is it Will it still be this run heavy? When you, and but then that hurts Kirk Cousins a lot, who he's a good quarterback, he's very efficient, but you he'll have the, the weeks, but he's more of a streaming option. Meanwhile, you have rookie Justin Jefferson, who played 81% of the time in the slot in college, and now you're if if that's what I'm saying. If this is Stefanski's offense, where they just they didn't use a slot wide receiver that much, that seems like an interesting fit. Of are you that confident that Justin Jefferson can jump from a full time slot wide receiver to an outside wide receiver in the NFL? Like that's to me is a really big stretch. That's why of of all of the rookies that are coming in with great opportunity ahead of them. Jalen Rager and Jerry Judy and, and Justin Jefferson, uh, he's the lowest to me because he has an extra transition to make as a player. But I did like him, obviously, in college. He was, he was uh, you know, dominant for LSU. But that's, you know, I don't want to bank fantasy on all of those variables, especially in this shortened season. Now, on the other side, outside, is going to be Adam Thielen, who I am the highest on of this group. I, I, I wouldn't – this is not a <laughs> foregone conclusion in my mind at all that Justin Jefferson won't be utilized the way he's used in college and used in, in the slot. I mean, the Vikings have come out and talked about using him in that capacity, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't throw that away. I like Justin Jefferson to be a surprise uh, value yeah, in, in fantasy drafts, so we don't, we don't agree there. The, the, you know, the 2019 Vikings used three wide receivers – only 22% of the snaps, which was by far the lowest in the NFL. And that's usually what you're going to need to get that guy in the slot. Um, well, yeah, I mean, you Thielen can go outside to get a guy into it. Yes. Yeah. Did you yeah. Well, that's, that's, <laughs> that's my point. So they're going to need to change their offense completely if they're going to have Justin Jefferson have enough right. slot, you know, r role um, to do what he did in college. This is a team that went from 606 passing attempts down to 444 last year. The offense goes through Dalvin Cook. What is your temperature tech check with Dalvin Cook right now in late July? Are you, you know, Jason, Oof. you've somehow drafted him in like every mock. It, it, it is true, and I have been able to get Alexander Madison in, in each one as well. 
And now those aren't just mocks where it's a computer. Um, you know, we ju I just did uh, one f for uh, an industry mock and with all industry experts, and I was able to double up. So I'm actually okay with Dalvin Cook if he falls to the back of the first round, but you have to get Alexander Madison, even if it means, to me, taking him in the seventh. Mike? Yeah, I, I think I'm I think I'm still good taking him there right now. We're going to know very soon because the, the all the the real worry was the threat from a, a few weeks ago that Dalvin Cook said he will not show up if he does not have a new deal and we're you know what a, a week away or so from from finding out if that is actually the truth and I'll reevaluate after that but for now I, I'll still take him the where Jason's talking about taking him Right now, he's the RB5 off the board. Uh, are you expecting the same from Kirk Cousins in terms of efficiency? Like, would you be comfortable with him as your QB2? A Q oh, yeah. A QB2, he's, yes. he's in a super, fine. Super flex league. Yeah, and, and the defense shouldn't be as good. I mean, you know, Zimmer is a defensive-minded and a, a very good defensive-minded head coach that gets the most out of the players he has. But you still have to play with the players that you have. He's lost a lot of their uh, mainstays on defense. So, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think they're going to have the luxury of as many games where they can throw the ball. I mean, there were, there were some games where you, you had Kirk Cousins, you know, barely th throw the ball in, in, a, in a victory. You remember week one where he threw the ball yeah. 10 oh, times? Week one was – that was the worst. 10 <laughs> times in a, in a victory. That's <laughs> absurd. But you had other games, 21 attempts, 27 attempts. Well, yeah, the, if you remember, the secondary, especially with Xavier Rhodes just disintegrating, the secondary last year actually became a target for fantasy wide receivers. I think that's the the kind of fantasy message for this offense is that, you know, you're always trying to, with your with your roster, just magnify opportunities for success. And this is an offense where you will have those weeks but the passing offense probably will not be in the you know top half of the league in terms of opportunities. So if you're banking on an Adam Thielen or on a Justin Jefferson breakout, or even on you know Kyle Rudolph for a spot start or an Irv Smith for a spot start, you really have to pick the right week and the right you know you get you have to get the right Kirk Cousins that week or the right game script that week, unless things fall apart completely for the defense and they have to turn it over to Cousins. Yeah, and that's what I was gonna I was gonna follow up with. In Kirk Cousins' range of outcomes, it reminds me of like back when I would draft Tony Romo because Romo was always super efficient, usually pretty solid for fantasy football. In the range of outcomes for the Vikings, the defense, the secondary does not work out and they have to turn the ball over to Kirk a little bit more and then he becomes, you know, like a low end, uh, low end QB1. The 606 pass attempts in his first year in Minnesota was a career high for him. That was 4,200 yards and 30 touchdowns. So, you know, they they weren't as good, and I think Zimmer will be focused on that. You know, yeah. they were not as good of a team. So. Last year, he only threw the ball 444 times. But if you do look at the second half of the year when their defense started to erode, and I think it's worse coming into 2020 than it was at the second half of last year, he was on pace for 523 attempts over the second half of the year. So I've actually got him going up from that number in passing attempts. It's part of why I like Adam Thielen. You're saying, I don't know if we could start Kyle Rudolph or Irv Smith or Justin Jefferson, but Adam Thielen is the clear one. Yes. He was a top 10 wide receiver before he got injured last season. He was a top 10 fantasy wide receiver the year before and the year before. I am 100% fine with Adam Thielen where he's going in drafts. Yeah, he's, he feels the safest in the passing game by far. Like, yes. far and away. The Bears, 8-8 eight and eight last year. They had 12 games of their 16 that were one-score games. They went. Uh, they didn't go the Packer route. <laughs> they went 500, 6-6, six and six, which is about how you'd imagine those to end up. Uh, this was a bad year on offense. Rushing yards per game, 27th in the league after being 11th in 2018, 28th in rushing touchdowns, 25th in passing yards per game, 25th in passing touchdowns. If you had your eyes open and you watched a Bears game, you saw them struggle on offense. Matt Nagy's still there. Uh, new offensive coordinator, Bill Lazor, replacing the uh, the hell frick experience, the hellish <laughs> experience from, la <laughs> yeah. from, from last year. And, um, you know, it's hard to blame the offensive coordinator with what you saw from Mitch Trubisky. Huge step back in year two. You know, 
looking at the landscape for the Chicago Bears, you're talking about Mitch Trubisky. You're talking about Nick Foles. Who ends up in that you know, starting quarterback position? And then how does it affect fantasy-relevant players like David Montgomery, Allen Robinson, and a player that I think, you know, has that breakout potential, Anthony Miller, if he can get consistent quarterback play. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be one of the most upsetting um, things to have no preseason for because the Bears are going to have the luxury, if they so choose, to not tell anyone who their starter is and for us to oh. not have any evidence. Oh, come on. You, Matt Nagy is 100% oh, doing that. Exactly. That's what I it would expect him to do. The and we won't have the, the luxury. The store magician. <laughs> you know, sometimes preseason makes the decisions, if even just social, you know, warriors are going to clamor for the one in preseason who is clearly better. And that's not going to be, there's not going to be a public viewing of this competition. So we won't know. I personally right now have them split. I have eight games for Foles and eight games for Trubisky. One of them starts, the other takes over the second half. And when I look at my numbers that I've statted out for each one, the, while I have talked about, I don't think Foles is a huge upgrade. He is an upgrade for the receiving options. I have him with more yardage, more passing touchdowns, uh, fewer interceptions. So uh, if I'm looking at Allen Robinson or Anthony Miller, I think you want Nick Foles to be the starting quarterback. Mike, did you want to weigh in on the quarterbacks at all? Sure. Uh, it's funny. I think it doesn't matter uh, because I'll say this. Whatever happens is going to happen in reverse no matter what, in my opinion. Nick Foles starts the season. Mitch Trubisky will be closing the season. If Trubisky opens, Nick Foles will be closing the season for the Bears because neither of them is going to be able to get the job done. And Matt Nagy is going to be playing for his coaching career at, at that point. So he's going to be, have to switch no matter what. Uh, I guess I would prefer Foles for the receivers, but I mean, Trubisky has shown that he'll he'll be absolutely target lock onto Allen Robinson, who deserves those targets. Last year, Allen Robinson had the third most targets. He is now uh, like fully removed and fully healthy after his ACL tear, which by the way, found out uh, hot hot fact. Alan Bernard, Alan Bernard Robinson. So you know that dude is an absolute savage. If he's <laughs> walking around, his name is Alan Bernard. The second. There's he's yes, the there's second two Alan, Alan Bernard Bernard Robinson. Yeah. Are we calling him but, Bernie? Is that what we're doing? No, 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 no. But and, and as far as like Montgomery, if if we're talking about the quarterback, I honestly just I don't think it matters. I I think that they're both equally uh able to get something done on the offensive side it will for montgomery it will come down to how well can that offensive line actually play i i agree with you i don't think that that i'm making a lot of decisions based on projecting Foles as the starter versus trubisky as the right. starter i already know that Allen robinson can play with bad quarterbacks and still give you fantasy production correct the more interesting thing is as if if trubisky could turn it around a little bit or if Foles ends up being a, a much better option Will Anthony Miller be able to provide week-to-week -week value, flex opportunities? Over the last seven games, he had 55 targets. That's 125 target pace. And if you used your eyeballs, this is a, a super talented player who made some big-time contested catches, who made some big-time plays for this offense. And if he does take a step forward, can either of these quarterbacks support two guys? And Because right. if he takes a step forward, does it come at the expense of Allen Robinson? Yeah, I mean, I, I have Allen Robinson the lowest, right? Mike, you've got him at number nine, Andy at number 11. So you both have him as a wide receiver one. I've got him down at 21, which I've gotten a lot Oof. of flack for. Oof. Um, You know, he, he, he's he been the target monster in his career. Obviously, he was last year, but it, it was still Trubisky throwing him the ball the year prior when he was on pace for 116 targets. I don't think he, he is... He was coming off an ACL tear. Sh okay, he was coming off of it, but he was on out there. a brand there. new team. He was... That's fine, but I'm just saying it's within the range of outcomes for him to not be a 140 target player next year, especially if if Anthony Miller steps up and, well, and is healthier. Really, I mean, Anthony Miller's had problems with health yeah, throughout, and, throughout his career, and uh, you know they obviously signed Jimmy Graham. We don't love him, but you give nine million dollars to a player to throw the ball his way from time to time when that's the only thing you can do with Jimmy Graham. So, you know, I just don't see Allen Robinson as – he's a great player. Um, 
but that's I, a lot of targets. I don't see him as a 154 lock. targets last year. If I buy sold 140 targets, buy or sell. I, I that's exactly where I have him. I believe. Let me double check. I have him at 140 targets. So I push. Still a pretty good chunk. It is a good chunk, but that's what I that's what gets him for me to wide receiver 21. Uh, I've got him just over a thousand yards and seven receiving touchdowns. Mike doesn't even need to speak. I can kind of feel his um, adoration and, and respect for Allen Robinson through the television screen. And uh, I hear you, Mike. He's very I hear, good. I hear you, Mike. Um, He's very good. Last one, David. My opportunity. I still really like him for where he's being drafted. Uh, he's the RB24 in basketball. The whole team has a bit of that offensive stink to it. He's going to have every opportunity on this offense. I do think he's talented. He's especially good in the passing game. If he has more opportunities there, which is something Matt Nagy has shown the ability to do historically, you know, he had an okay year if you look at this offense and say 27th, uh, you know, 25th in passing yards per game, very inefficient. Points per game, 29th. You know, I don't put that on the back of a rookie running back. I put that on the back of Mitch Trubisky, Matt Nagy's decision-making. Do they finish above 29th this year? <laughs> yeah, I think they do. I think I think as a whole, the offense takes a step forward. Just that forward. offensive line. They're not necessarily a good offense, but they're not going to be as bad as they were last year. I think we all project them to take a small step forward. And if a small step forward happens for a back who's pretty much guaranteed 250 uh, r rushing attempts, then that's you know, a lot. <laughs> that's a lot. If the touchdowns come, he's going to be good for fantasy and, and finish above that running back 24 rank. You know, I, I think he's he's got that uh, running back 15 look to him. Mike, uh, quick prediction. Are we talking about Matt Nagy's offense uh, this time next year? No. Okay. Okay. Sorry, man. I wonder if Bears fans are happy you said that <laughs> or sad. I'll bet they're sad. split. Yeah. They start the season against Detroit, the Giants, the Falcons, and the Colts. Bears season gets started. Wow. There. Those first three weeks are pretty good pretty for whoever gets the start. Yeah. Yeah. That is nice. Detroit, the Giants, the Falcons. Phenomenal. Speaking of Detroit. They didn't have a great year. 3-12-1 last season. They were – it's funny how this is – you look at the one-score games just in this division. I don't think we've broken that metric out in the other divisional breakdowns. And here's the tough luck team. You had the 9-1 and one Packers, the 8-8 eight and eight Bears, and now the 3-8 and eight Detroit Lions in one-score games. The 3-12-1 record, I – you know – it betrays what I saw in the field. Matthew Stafford was very, very good last year. Um, this was not for a good. A half. This was not a good defense. Yeah, for a half, and and then you had to deal with David Blau, and and you know, hard to have expectations for an offense with a backup quarterback, no matter who you are. So mm -hmm. passing yards per game, they still finished tenth in the league, despite the fact that he went out. Holy crap! Yeah, that's insane. Yeah, he he was having a an outstanding year, and then went out in week ten, and then it was the David Blau fest. Not a lot has changed on this team. They brought in DeAndre Swift in the second round, my number one rated rookie running back out of Georgia, a player that I think will have a, an instant impact, but Detroit running back impact has not meant much for fantasy for the past 20 years. No, I, I am well documented as a carry on Johnson, uh, truther extraordinaire, deeply in love. Um, and, and how do you fall out of love? I'm just curious. Like, if you were to fall out mm, of love, how does that even question. happen? Uh, it happens. Do you have you ever fallen out of love? I think it happens swiftly. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh very nice, <laughs> very nice, Mike. Oh my god, uh, that is the only way it would happen is swiftly. But the the truth is, uh, you know, he was too injury prone to take the role of what they needed. They go out, they spend high draft capital on a very talented running back in Swift, but carry on is still there and he will eat into the work that Swift is getting. I, I don't want either of these guys. I've not had a single mock, a single uh, deep league or, or any platform that I have chosen to, to draft either one of the running backs who are splitting the workload. I don't think I have either. The I, Detroit Lions. I'm blind to them. On, in mock drafts. Yeah, they, you can mm. go ahead and cross their names out. I just don't. 29th in rushing touchdowns last year, 21st in rushing yards per game. I think they had 
14 different running backs at one point in the season. But what you said was last year, and I feel like those stats are true for 14. When when did Barry Sanders retire? Because since then, they have never been able to run the ball well. Uh, Nor know, should they if Matthew Stafford played the way he played last year. Oh, Matthew Stafford was unbelievable. He was on pace for 4,998 yards, 38 touchdowns, and 10 interceptions. <laughs> I mean, outlandish numbers. Much more aggressive in 2019. He had a league-leading 19.2% deep attempts, which is one part Matthew Stafford and one part having Kenny Galladay and Marvin Jones as a part of your offense. Um, Kenny Galladay, I think we all have a have him ranked very highly. He's the wide receiver seven off the board right now. 32% of his targets were 20-plus yards down the field. So, you know, we saw this with David Blau. One or two games – it only takes one or two catches, you know, for for Kenny Galladay Kenny too. Kenny G, Kenny G oh, is so smooth. So smooth. He's going deep. It's a touchdown. <laughs> it's a little frightening to me. Uh, Marvin Jones is still on our kind of value list. It's a permanent selection until he retires uh, because he's Marvin Jones. He's the wide receiver, thirty-seven off the board, but he can still drop a. Uh, three touchdown week on you at any moment and having Matthew Stafford back will help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Marvin Jones is looked to in the red zone. <laughs> He's tied with Michael Thomas with eight red zone touchdowns, despite missing three games. Um, Marvin Jones is our editor in chief. Kyle's pretty much favorite player in all of fantasy football. He never leaves a draft without him. Um, and, that, it, and that's because of draft cost. Yes, because he's he's cheap. He takes him in the first. He is. Every, every. <laughs> right. Yes, I make sure I never leave without him. He's always available when I pick <laughs> in the bag of the first. Um, yeah, it's just, it's a it's a very affordable uh, player late in drafts that will provide depth in a, in a year where I think we're going to need depth more than ever. And he's he's talented. He's not always going to be the most consistent. But when you're looking at your last flex player, which is where Marvin Jones is basically being – he's being drafted to your bench. So he is a depth piece or a backup player that you throw in the right matchup, and he can win you a week, whereas most of the guys on your bench, most of your depth, most of your last flex, they don't have that ability. Uh, so I, I think that's why we all see Marvin Jones as a value. Let me ask you two questions, Mike, about this roster fantasy-wise. Number one, if you drafted TJ Hawkinson, let's say you went late round tight end, I think, okay. I think Hawkinson will be drafted in, in, in a decent amount of leagues late. What are the odds that he's able to be lined up in your, in your tight end position for the full 16? Where he's your uh, guy as opposed to just somebody you're drafting to be a, uh, a streamer. I would put it very low. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't, I don't. I didn't see enough out of Hawkinson. I know he had he had week one against Arizona. He was one he, of the he went, major free agent pickups yes. after that week. Yeah, I don't, how many how many fab dollars were wasted? Just th thrown into an engine. <laughs> like it, it, I I don't see it happening for T.J. Hawkinson this year. I mean, you had multiple injuries. Didn't really get enough time on the field. So I'm. Maybe later, I th I think that he can become the player that they drafted, but I'm not taking the chance on him as a as a late round flyer. Fifty four percent catch rate for T.J. Hawkinson last year. That's thirty two for three sixty seven and two. That's not great. No, and you no. might say, well, he spent half the year obviously without Stafford, but in the games with Stafford, he was a fifty seven point nine percent catch rate. Also not great, especially for a tight end. Their catch rates are usually much higher, uh, easier, open targets. Um, I do believe in the talent. Um, he, he was the guy that you know I loved the most of that draft class in the tight ends. And we do need to remember he was a rookie tight end. So you can't get mad at him for not performing. It was almost like that week one performance. Yeah, it ruined the yeah. 15 weeks afterwards. Exactly. It ruined the 15 weeks afterwards. And, and, and it's a shame because if he came out – and put up, uh, you know, 60 yards and a touchdown, had a decent game, but wasn't the 131 yards, I think we would actually have him higher valued this year in drafts than him having a great game, which is, you know, it's Possibly. a little bit a little bit wacky. I will say that 60-yard mark, he never surpassed again after week one. 
That's true. 56 yards was his next <laughs> highest, and that was really his next highest at all, never above 50 outside of that. Yeah, I mean, if you take Matthew Stafford's pace and you were to be so kind to give it to him for this upcoming year, and you're distributing 38 passing touchdowns, Hawkinson's having a far better year than where we're, we have him. Yeah, it, it's well, possible. And I, I want to bounce back to DeAndre Swift real quick. What, like in the range of outcomes, just percentage chance, what what would you put it at? I'll get, Andy, I'll throw to you. The percentage chance that, that Patricia says, okay, he is in fact, DeAndre Swift is the best running back on this team. I'm going to give it to him. We, I mean, we had, yeah, I think it's pretty, Johnson's an injury risk. Yeah. You had, we did have a four game stretch with Bo Scarborough. Now they were up against it, but Bo Scarborough was averaging 18 attempts a game for four straight weeks before Carry On Johnson came back from the IR. What I liked about Swift and why I had him graded the way I did coming into this year was the pass catching ability. So if he's on the field, uh, you know that's what that equates to to me. Is is you're saying are you is he going to give him the opportunity to be the guy by being on the field more often? If, we know Stafford will throw to the running back. Yeah, I mean, we've had many theoretic years where that's the only yes. value theoretic had was catching the ball to the backfield. There, there's a world where, where that happens. Yeah, where DeAndre Swift hits the point where he's worth that shot the same way that we've talked about some of these other rookie running backs. Carry on, gets hurt once a year. What do they still believe in him? I mean, obviously they spent a high draft capital pick on DeAndre Swift, and we haven't ignored the running back position in Detroit entirely bringing up the Oritic, who's been a, a, a flex-worthy player in years past. Um, he's the RB27 off the board right now. He's being drafted ahead of Carrion Johnson. So the fantasy community is looking at him as a upside uh, carry, uh, what Kareem Hunt range type of player right now. Right. Yeah, and, and as the Carrion Johnson truther, I would draft neither, but if I had to draft one, it would be Swift ahead of Carrion Johnson. The draft capital they okay. put in, the fact that Carrion has had two years – to get the job done and hasn't. Uh, I, I think the transition is made to where it's a one-two punch with Swift being the one. Okay, anything else you guys want to talk about with the Detroit Lions? No, no. just uh, worthy mentioning that Stafford is a great late round. You know, when, when you think you missed out on almost everybody, Stafford is still usually there. Now he opens against Chicago. I'm fine with that. Okay. Would you rather be sitting uh, Stafford the whole year or Big Ben on the return? That's a great question. Both coming off of injuries, so you can't use the excuse for either. I would go Stafford. I think I lean Stafford. I think I do as well. That's that's a really tough one of you could look back in 12 months and go, that was idiotic. <laughs> and yet at the same time, you could look back with either of those picks <laughs> yes. and be like, I... I'm so glad I didn't invest an early draft pick on a quarterback. On a quarterback, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, that is it for today's episode of the show. Appreciate you subscribing to the podcast, reviewing the podcast. It means a lot to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers. And we also want to thank Omaha Steaks. Their grand summer grill out package lets you stay at home and eat like you're at the best steakhouse in town. We're talking Omaha Steaks, bacon wrapped filet mignon, mm, plus pork chops, chicken, kielbasa, and more delivered to your door. Visit omahasteaks.com and type footballers in the search bar to shop summer grill packs today. And this week, only Omaha Steaks will add four burgers and four gourmet jumbo franks for free to your order.